Okay, so today for uh, 3.5, we're gonna be dividing polynomials. We've learned a few things about polynomials. I guess the coolest, in my opinion, was graphing, something that looks like a disaster, how easy it is to graph. Um, the, what dividing polynomials is gonna give us is it's gonna help us turn polynomials into factored form. And as you saw from the previous video, graphing from factored form is easy. So if you have something that isn't factored form, we use division and factoring to turn it into factored form so we can graph it easily. So, you're probably thinking in math, why did my grade 8 teacher teach me long division? I didn't use that in grade 9, grade 10, grade 11. Why did I learn that if I've never used it? Well, look at this. Boom, in your face, it's back. Long division, bring it back to grade 12. Um, you need to know it. Not really, but you do. So let's recall it. When we're doing 107 divided by 4, we call 107 the dividend. So let's get some terminology out of the way. This is the dividend. What you're dividing by is the divisor. So 107 divided by 4 equals 26. This is your quotient. If 107 doesn't divide evenly into 4, you will have a remainder other than 0. So we call it the remainder. Okay, so just a reminder, we find what multiple of 4 can go into 10. We choose 8, so we draw the 2 up there. Then we do 10 minus 8, we get 2. Bring down the 7. How many multiples of 4 can go into 27? 6 of them to give me 24. So I put a 6 up there. 6 times 4 is 24. Subtract. I don't have any more numbers here, so my remainder is 3. Now, division statement. It's really important to understand, memorize this really, um, a division statement, because it's going to help you, first of all, solve for any one of these if the question gives you everything but. Um, and it's also a good way to end your therefore statement. So this just means that the dividend, this 107, equals the divisor times the quotient. So these two guys multiplied. And that you have to add the remainder to get the, to that 107. So it's just 107 breaks up into these two multiples plus that remainder for that question. Okay, now let's do it with some polynomials. This is what we're looking to do. We're looking to divide this guy by this guy. So it's the same thing as the 107 and 26, just a little more complicated. So let's set it up. We do x minus 3 divided by 3x3 minus 5x squared minus 7x minus 1. Something to consider, you need every single power of x from the highest to the lowest in your dividend. If you're missing one, you have to put a 0 there or you're going to make a mistake. Okay, you're going to see that in the next question. Now, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to figure out what multiple of x minus 3 goes into these first two numbers. And the easiest way to do that is just use the first number, x. How do I turn x into 3x to the 3? <coughs> In the elbow. So all I need is it needs a 3 and it needs an x squared. If I multiply this x by 3x squared, I'm going to get 3x to the 3. So I put 3x squared up here. And now it looks the same. Because I'm multiplying 3x squared by x minus 3. I'm going to get 3x squared minus 9x squared. Draw a line. And this is where we kind of get to do the same thing over and over again. These cancel out. Negative 5 minus negative 9 is positive 4x squared. And I pause. And now I do the same thing. I look at this x. How do I turn this x into a 4x squared? Well, it needs a 4. Do the numbers in the x's separately. It needs a 4 and it needs an x. So I need a 4x. Multiply by 4x, I get this. Multiply the negative 3 by 4x, I get negative 12x. Oh, wait, no. I forgot to bring down that 7. Bring down this. And this is where I'm drawing 4x and 3. Okay, so I multiplied. Now I do the same thing. Subtract and erase. Subtract and I get positive 5x. If you're confused at these subtractions, then you don't know how to subtract. A lot of questions arise from negative 7 minus negative 12. At this level, you can't make a mistake with subtraction. So pick up your calculator if you have to. Um, and don't make a mistake there because you're just wasting something complicated. Making a mistake with something easy is going to be a big waste of time. Bring down this negative 1 now. And now I gotta turn this x into that 5x. Easy, 5. And I get 5x minus 15. Remember, I'm multiplying the 5 times the binomial, times x times negative 3, times x times negative 3. 
1 minus negative 15. You got it. 14. So I'm going to create my division statement now. My division statement is going to be, well, therefore, the dividend, 3x3 minus 5x squared minus 7x minus 1, is equal to the divisor, x minus 3, times the quotient, which is the answer I got, plus my remainder. And that's a beautiful therefore statement. Okay, next. Um, this is disgusting. Nobody wants to do long division. I didn't want to do long division until, or since grade eight, to be honest. So what can we do besides long division? Sometimes we have to use long division, but if we don't have to, we are definitely not going to. And this is a scenario where we don't have to. And I'm going to explain it now and a few times later. But anytime you are dividing by something linear, you don't have to use long division. Um, should I say it that way? Okay, we'll keep it to that generally right now. Okay, our next method is called synthetic. Okay, so all you quick multipliers and adders, you can do mental math in your head. Synthetic division is amazing. It's actually fun. It's a quick puzzle um, to divide two terms. So, two polynomials. Here's my dividend and my divisor. It's the same question I'm going to do using the synthetic division. The first thing I do is I draw kind of a long L. Here's where my divisor is going to go. This is where my dividend is going to go. So it kind of looks like this, just upside down and straight. The factor, which is 3, goes here. The 0, the factor, positive 3. And in here, I put all my coefficients. 3, negative 5, negative 7, negative 1. Okay, so it, it already took me less time to set up the division compared to long division because I have to write all the x squares and stuff. Now, all you have to do is follow the pattern. Bring down the 3 to start. Multiply by 3. Write it down. Add 4 times 3. 12. Add 5 times 3. 15. Add. Done. Look at these numbers. These numbers are the coefficients to your long division followed by your remainder in that order. So this is 3x squared plus 4x plus 5 remainder 14. I saved ink, I saved time, I saved brain power. Synthetic division is definitely the way to go. There's no reason you'll be doing long division if you don't have to. Unfortunately, sometimes you have to. Okay, so I'm going to go through this again. Synthetic division, I write down my 3. Actually, I'm not going to go through it again because it's a video. You can just go back and look at it. Amazing. And that's it for synthetic division. Okay, we're going to kick it up a notch over here. I have a question. Determine the remainder for this division of poly, two polynomials. Um, to find the remainder right now with all the skills that we've been taught in chapter 3 so far, I need to divide to find that remainder. Find that last step, um, which gives me the remainder. This polynomial is not in descending order. X of 4 is here. It's all a mixed mash of stuff. So the first thing you should do is change everything into descending order. Highest power to lowest power. If you're missing a power, so look here. 4 to the power of 3. There's no power of 2. You need to add it in. 0. X squared. You need to hand add it in. Okay, now this looks much better. It's in descending order. I'm not missing any power, so I can convert it into my long division step. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my long division. I need to match this x squared to this x to the 4. I have to multiply by x squared. x squared times this makes it look like this, so that's good. Now multiply it by everything. x, 4. Oh, sorry, notice where I'm writing the x2, x squared. I'm writing it right above the x squared in the dividend. It's a good idea to line up your work so you kind of know where you're going to finish. x squared times 2x plus 2x3 x squared times 1, x squared. Subtract. See you later. This is 
negative two minus two, negative four x three, this minus this, negative x squared, bring down the five. Do it again. How do I make this look like this? Well, I definitely need a negative four and I need an x. Now multiply negative four x times the trinomial. Negative four x three, negative eight x, negative four x. Sorry, this is a five x, my bad. Line, subtract, this minus this, gone. This minus this, seven x squared. This minus this, nine x, bring down the three, do it again. How do I make this look like this? I need a seven. So this is seven x squared. This is 14 x. This is seven. Subtract. Gone. There's an x here. Negative five x minus four. This is my remainder. Negative five x minus four. There's nothing else that I can do up here because I'm out of terms. Um, to break down this remainder further because of that x squared. Now, this is an example of where we can't use synthetic division. I mentioned it before. This is not a line. It's not linear. It's not x plus 4, 2x minus 3. The power is to the 2. L for us, we have to use long division. Okay, so I can write my uh, division statement. I don't really want to because there's too much going on over here. Um, but I found my remainder. There it is, negative 5x minus 4. Now, when we have a remainder, if you remember from that division statement, the dividend equals the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder. So take a look at this. If I break down the dividend into the divisor and the quotient without this addition, this is factored form. So if there's no remainder, it means this is factorable. And whatever I divided by is a factor. But when I have a, a remainder like this, I gotta add negative five X minus four. When I start adding stuff, it's not factored anymore. I can't really graph it that well. Um, we got problems. Okay, so it's a good way to know that if I have a remainder, whatever I divided is not a factor of that polynomial. That's gonna come in handy in the future. Okay, last thing leading into this. Is X plus two a factor of this polynomial? I just talked about it. Um, it's different language to achieve the same thing. If I want to know if x plus 2 is a factor of this polynomial, i got to find the remainder. If the remainder is 0, x plus 2 is a factor because of this. Okay, If this is 0, you're in factored form. Now, this is a line, so I'm using synthetic division. I'm going to set up using my 0, and in descending order, uh, I'll rewrite it, x4 negative 2x3, there's no x squared, so plus x squared, plus 13x minus 6. So I rewrote it just like I did here, and now I'm going to fill in this table for synthetic division. All the coefficients go here. Bring down the 1, multiply, add, negative 2 plus negative 2, negative 4, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, Add. Remainder is zero. Okay, quick multiplication and addition, non-stop. Multiplication and addition. If this guy at the end is zero, you can say therefore, since r equals zero, x plus two is a factor. Synthetic division is amazing. You can do it quickly. Um, if you're using a calculator, that's fine. You shouldn't. There's no reason to use a calculator. Take your time. Add and subtract. It takes longer to pick up a calculator. Um, and that's it. Long division, synthetic division. Eventually, we're going to learn how to graph after we factor these polynomials. And it's going to lead into bigger and better things.